Have you been to Notre Dame, a medieval cathedral in Paris completed mostly in the 13th century? At the front entrance to Notre Dame, there is a depiction of the fall of man, the dramatic moment at the Garden of Eden where Eve eats the forbidden fruit and shares the fruit with Adam. Ashamed of their nakedness, both are expelled from the Garden of Eden. We reach the climax of curiosity when we see their private parts are covered with a plaster cast of fig leaves. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aperons. As soon as Christianity seeped into the European land in the first century AD, this doctrine was literally adopted by the artisans and sculptures and etched on the stone. As we entered the medieval period, Catholic churches started viewing nudity as obscene and a sin. Saint Augustine, the famous theologian and one of the Latin fathers of the church, believed that since eating the forbidden fruit, man lost control of his genitals. An unwanted erection was apparently a sign of disobedience. Thus, fig leaf became synonymous with sin, sex and censorship. The Renaissance period led to the age of awareness. There came a genius artist and sculptor who defied Christian beliefs and rekindled the birth of the ancient nude, Michelangelo. Michelangelo's David is indeed the most perfect statue in the world. It exudes the aesthetics of high Renaissance art and the technical proneness of Greek sculpture. A nude proudly standing tall in the public place of Palazzo Vacchio, Michelangelo portrayed David as a virtuous man and tried to show his inner beauty through his outer beauty. He took care of the tiniest of details and as we slide down, you might notice David's small penis. Yes, there was a reason for his small penis. Michelangelo tried to imitate the classical statues. An art historian explains how the small phalluses shown in Greek statues were seen as a symbol of restraint and control. Soon Michelangelo's virtuosity reached the Vatican and he was invited by Pope Julius II to design the Sistine Chapel. Yet again, Michelangelo challenged the Catholic Church and painted the way he wanted. Biagio di Cesena, the Pope's master of ceremonies, vociferated the fresco paintings to be suitable for public baths and taverns and not a chapel. Michelangelo was charged with blasphemy and crossing his limits. These criticisms instigated the Catholic priest and in turn pressurized Pope Julius II to take action against Michelangelo's nude sculptures. A campaign was launched to camouflage the private parts of these sculptures in Italy. This was called the Fig Leaf Campaign, the biggest cover-up in history. The cover-up choice was a fig leaf. Why a fig leaf and not a birch leaf or chestnut or mighty oak? Because the Garden of Eden had abundant fig trees. Scholars believe that the Garden of Eden was set in modern-day Iran. Michelangelo's David is the most popular sculpture to be censored for nudity as per the church's propaganda. Then Michelangelo's Christ the Redeemer in Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome came under the papal authority and a permanent bronze girdle was placed which could never be removed. This was done after the statue became a victim of vandalization. 
Some scholars believe that the plaster and marble phalluses were even chiseled off. Art historian Leo Steinberg pointed out in his 1983 book The Sexuality of Christ in Renaissance Art and in Modern Oblivion that many beautiful antique statues were castrated in Rome by the order of Pope Paul IV. Believe it or not, some have rumored that a drawer of the castrated bits may still hide somewhere in the Vatican. The campaign didn't spare paintings either. Areas of Michelangelo's Last Judgment, deemed unethical, were painted over twice in the 1500s and then again in the 1700s with little swaddles and loin cloths added. A Mannerist artist named Daniel de Volterra was charged with modifying Michelangelo's frescoes, which won him the derogatory nickname of the Breeches Maker. The trend took in radar Masaccio's paintings too. In the 1600s, an unknown artist covered his fresco, The Expulsion, with fig leaves. And in between 1758 and 1759, Pope Clement XIII swathed even more sculptures in the Vatican's collection with fig leaves. The fig leaf phenomenon spread beyond Italy's borders too. When the Grand Duke of Tuscany gifted a cast of Michelangelo's David to Queen Victoria in 1857, a large leaf was promptly sculpted to spare the blushes of visiting female dignitaries, according to the Victoria and Albert Museum. Fortunately, a detachable fig leaf was created so that it could hang over the figure without damaging it. Today, the sculpture stands completely nude in the Victoria and Albert Museum, while a small vitrine next to it houses the large leaf. As we traverse 17th century art, painters like Lorenzo Bernini gave an ingenious and eroticized twist to the fig leaf. Bernini understood that the more we cover things up, the more we want to know what's underneath. So he dexterously created the famous marble sculpture, The Rape of Proserpina. The sculpture portrays no nudity and exudes a slipping drape effect, conveying the message of the abduction of Proserpina, who was seized and taken to the underworld by god Pluto. In 19th century art, the 18 feet statue of Achilles, the Greek hero of the Trojan War, was unveiled at the Hyde Park Corner on 18th June 1822. The statue was made by Sir Richard Westmacott using 33 tons of bronze from cannons captured in Wellington's campaigns in France. Originally, the statue was completely nude. But soon, it caused outrage and so, a small fig leaf had to be added soon after it was installed. Over the last 40 years, a few of the paintings have been restored. But still, nudity is considered a taboo in the Catholic Church. The fig leaves linger on at unexpected places. Unarguably, the fig leaf campaign is the biggest cover-up in history to censor art and nudity. Have you seen any sculptures or paintings with fig leaves? Do let me know in the comment section. If you like my work, consider donating to me on patreon.com forward slash frame of reference and my sincere thanks to all my active patrons. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos from our channel Frame of Reference.